This is a symbolic representation of the Redlands UFO sighting from 4 February 1968 as it moved toward and back from Norton Air Force Base. Martyred ufologist Dr. James E. McDonald addressed this event with Carl Sagan in his 1969 presentation, Science in Default. Dr. James E. McDonald, Senior Physicist, Institute for Atmospheric Physics, and Professor of Meteorology, University of Arizona. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The uh, AAAS, I think, is to be congratulated for organizing and holding this symposium. I fully agree with the remarks that Dr. Sagan made that uh, there is a scientific obligation to examine questions such as uh, that of the unidentified flying objects, an obligation of the public uh, to science itself. And uh, as the title of my uh, remarks indicates, my study of the problem leads me to take the position that uh, we in science are in default, have been in default for two decades, for failing to close with a problem uh, that uh, created such widespread concern both here and abroad, uh, failing to close with it uh, long ago. Once again, it is not a thoroughgoing and adequate investigation of the UFO problem. The conclusions that Dr. Condon uh, reached in his summary analysis that the problem doesn't worth, uh, merit further scientific uh, study, uh, I think is not at all supported by the content of the report, as the previous speaker, I believe, also uh, suggested. There are cases that were investigated that don't appear uh, at all in the report. Uh, Level in Texas is an, ex an example, one that I think a number of us here are familiar with that was investigated but doesn't appear at all. occurred at Redlands, California in early 1968, in February 4th. I interviewed about uh, eight witnesses. Uh, professors at the University of Redlands interviewed about 25. This was a case of a, uh, a large number of people uh, hearing unusual sounds getting out in the street. Uh, looking up and uh, from a variety of directions that, uh, crudely speaking, triangulated moderately well, uh, uh, indicated an object at about a thousand feet elevation. Ultimately, earlier it was about 300 feet, uh, estimated to be about 50 or 60 feet in diameter. Uh, when most of the people were out uh, looking at it, uh, and all that I interviewed uh, were watching it, it was making no sound, hovering motionless, uh, was a disc shaped object with uh, luminous. Uh, um, uh, surface around the side of it. Uh, it uh, suddenly shot up uh, to two or three times its original height, estimated 300 up to about 1,000, moved off a distance of several blocks, seen by still other people. Uh, this case, uh, and finally uh, moved off, this case was explained to the Air Force as a small aircraft. Uh, there were no aircraft in the area at the time, as the University of Redlands people ascertained. I cite this as an example, an example, of a case investigated by the Connor Report, which didn't even get into uh, the report at all. Other inspired human minds helped to scatter breadcrumbs of the Redlands UFO into Earth's cultural literacy for the February 4th anniversary in 1985. We take you now to Kermit the Frog with another fast-breaking news story. Oh, oh, hey-ho, this is Kermit the Frog, and I'm speaking to you from Old MacDonald's Farm. It's made famous by that rhyme, Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had some... Spaceship. A, a spaceship. A spaceship. Yes, with a whoosh-whoosh here and a whoosh-whoosh there, here a whoosh, there a whoosh, everywhere a whoosh-whoosh. Whoosh-whoosh, you say? Wow, well, mm, uh... Okay. Okay, well, Old MacDonald has a farm and a reported spaceship, but I, of course, have not seen it. Uh, would you mind describing this uh, reported spaceship for us, Mr. McDonald? Oh, sure, laddie. You see, it's, it's, it's red and it flies through the air, mm -hmm. and, 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 it, and it looks like an upside-down disc. What? Ah. Oh, no. Look at that. Uh, uh, no, no, not E.T., Kermit the Frog. 